Hey friends, Pastor Bill Walden here. God's blessings on you. Devotional today, uh, for February the 10th, 2024. This is out of Matthew 26. It says, And it came to pass, when Jesus had finished all these sayings, that he said to his disciples, You know that after two days is the Passover, and the Son of Man will be delivered up to be crucified. In Matthew 25, 24, we saw Jesus teaching on prophecy. In the previous chapters, we saw Jesus debating uh, the religious rulers as they were trying to set uh, traps for him in public to catch him in his words, to cause him to be looked down upon by the public. He had been calling them out for what they were. He said, you are like whitewashed tombs full of dead men's bones. You put burdens on the people. And Jesus did all these things knowing full well that it would stir up their anger against him. Uh, but he had to speak the truth, not only for their sake, should they choose to repent, but also for the sake of the of the people in public, lest they keep following them. And Jesus warned the public, the, the common man, if you will, to not follow uh, the lifestyles and the, the attitudes of the religious leaders who were not serving God, they were serving themselves. But as I was reading Matthew 26, verse 2, it says, Jesus said, You know after two days is the Passover, and the Son of Man will be delivered up to be crucified. Jesus is the one that had initiated the march back into Jerusalem. He walked the 80 miles or so with his disciples from Galilee. He went into the temple area. He allowed himself to be received on Palm Sunday, uh, just a few days previous to chapter 26. And uh, they... We're calling him Messiah, the son of David, save now. Um, the Pharisees said, rebuke your disciples because they're, they're worshiping you. And Jesus said in another gospel, if I tell you, if these don't cry out, the, the very rocks will cry out. So Jesus knew exactly who he was, what he was doing. He knew that the crowd would turn fickle, many of them. He knew that the religious leaders would be against him. He understood all of this. And yet I was struck with the statement so matter-of-factly that he's telling his disciples they're going to kill me and he willingly walked right into it and it's just astounding to me the deep love of God for me for you for mankind the deep desire of Jesus Christ God the Father and God the Spirit to have people forgiven of their sins listen when judges let guilty criminals go, we say they're bad judges. We expect justice. God expects justice too, and he should. We get that idea of justice, I believe, from the heart of God. But mixed with his justice, there's a great deal of mercy, and he, if you will, allowed his son to be a substitute for us. He took our crimes, he took our sins, he suffered for us so that we could be pronounced not guilty. And Jesus willingly and lovingly uh, just told them, listen, the Son of Man is going to be delivered to be crucified. And he walked right into it. This was the plan of God from before the foundation of the world. God so loves mankind that he sent Jesus, his only son, uh, to be a sacrifice for our sins. The Bible says whoever has the Son has life. And it says that to living people, people who are living biologically, but really not alive spiritually. God wants to give you eternal life. And I'm so thankful uh, to Jesus Christ, who just told his disciples, guys, this is what's going to happen. And in, in essence, it's the plan of God to save you. I hope you know Jesus. I hope you have opened your heart to him. If not, please consider him. You know where to look. If I can be of any help, I'd be glad to. Okay, thanks. God bless you. Bye-bye.